it is yet again a Friday. Each week there is a Friday and that means FNA Friday. Before I go into further subjects like planning and reference and coming up with ideas and inspiration, I do want to go back one more time to the bouncing ball. I want to show an example by Cameron Miyazaki, which is from 2002. This is 16 years old and it's still fantastic. I show it to my students in every class. I want to show you why I think this is so awesome. It's a great piece with a lot of detail. Now his clips are not online anymore. I believe his website is also down, but on YouTube you can find his demo real pieces. I hope that he doesn't mind that we're looking at this. If he does, Maybe he can comment or you can comment and let me know if he wants that to be taken down. I don't know. For now, I want to go the route of asking for forgiveness and permission because it's so cool and I really want to talk about it. And it's an example that I showed to a lot of my students. And let's go and just watch the shot. So getting into this, I want to show you step by step why I like this and what elements to me are standing out. To this day, it's still for me a reference clip that I show to my students. For me, you want to show right away that you can animate. So if it's a demo reel shot, your very first shot has to be great. And you don't want to waste time showing and displaying your skill set. So for me, you want to start off strong and you want to show I can animate. And it's not acting choices, it's just right away from a technical point of view, the mechanics, they're right there. Then you can go straight into acting and acting choices, entertainment value, all that good stuff. And to me, he doesn't waste time. He goes straight into this and you have small ball, big ball, there's contrast, there are different sizes and weight. The scale is different. So right away, you can show I can do something small, I can do something big. And he added a tail to the small one. So right off the bat, you have a lot of different elements that to me show, yeah, I can animate this, this is no problem. And then he gets straight to the conflict, which I'm always a big fan of that you present your character with the problem. So the character has to make a choice to fix that problem. And those choices are going to reveal their character. So you have the fence can't get through. He tries again. Yeah, I won't make it. This is already cute to me that the little ball comes back. So that to me is already showing that there is a relationship between the two. Now you might argue he might come back to laugh at the big ball, but that's not what happens. He jumps up and the big ball does the same. So let's go back. They come in, shows us the conflict. Little ball comes back, cares about this one and shows a specific way of jumping. You can see that little, uh, that strain of, ah, oh, try harder. And then you can see how the big ball repeats this. The little ball is teaching the big ball. So you can see that the big ball tries. The little ball is happy about that, comes back, Little ball doesn't have to go back and wait here, like, come on, follow me. No, no, comes back. I want to be with my friend here. The friend tries, almost makes it. So you have that little element of surprise, because you could just stop it. And you, I mean, you can just, the big ball jump over and that's it. But no, there's an extra little conflict problem there. And you can see, well, how is the little ball going to react to that? The little ball goes up and helps the big one. So again, it reinforces their relationship. The little ball wants to help. And then you got that extra little punchline surprise with some fun animation here. Snappy, contrasty timing where this goes out with a massive stretch. Bing! And again, you could stop. You could stop at this point, the gag is there and we're done. But what I like about this is that the big ball comes back and then waits. And to me, it feels like the big ball cares. Like, oh no, what happened to my friend? And it shows one more thing in terms of their relationship. So it's not just about the physics, and bouncing balls going through an obstacle course, there's more to it. And it seems simple, but to me, there's just an extra layer of taking a bouncing ball assignment to the next level and giving those static objects character. So to recap, you got a little ball coming in, big ball coming in, you can show differences in weight. There's the added complexity of the tail. Then you got the conflict where there is a problem and now you're wondering what's gonna happen, what are they going to do to overcome this problem? Then you have the teaching moment where it shows the relationship of, I'm not gonna laugh at this or do whatever. I'm gonna show the big ball how you can get over this. Then you can see the cuteness of little ball teaching the big one, but you can also see how 
This is one way of bouncing with this. Doing the same thing with a heavy ball, how is that looking potentially differently? Then you have ball coming back onto the big ball side. So the little ball cares. Then it tries, almost makes it. Little ball cares and tries to help. And that leads to one more surprise and big contrast in timing. And then big ball comes back for one more element of their relationship and how they care about each other. Now, if I'll be super picky, and again, this is something that's just massively picky and it's 2002 and I'm only saying this because the work has been elevated. Nowadays, there's more to it. If someone would do this in my class, obviously it would be a super high grade and A would be fantastic. I would give one comment, dare I be so arrogant and give one comment. I think what you could tweak when the ball comes down here, lands here, jumps up, lands in the same spot. So what I would do is that you wouldn't have repetition. So if a ball is here, jumps up and then lands, it would land in a different spot. Jump back up again into a different apex and then land into a different position again. There's always something different. You never repeat. And the second thing would be, and again, this is very, very picky, is that the path is very straight and you could have something where the big ball has, you know, smaller left to right, while the little one has a bit more left to right bounces, more contrast and more complexity in the path, so that the path is not just one axis, one straight line. Again, this is super picky. This is something on top of a shot that's already fantastic. But if you want to go into super fine detail, this is what I would add. At the same time, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think that's going way too far? Would you add something else? Is this the first time you've seen this clip? Let me know. Let me know what you think about this clip and if you have any other shots. There are examples of bouncing balls that show that you can take it to the next level. It's just an exercise, but you go just a bit further where you can show great contrast, changes in size and scale and weight. There are so many examples online and there are a lot of good ones. There's this great example here with a huge amount of differences in properties and what they are, what type of balls they are. It's, it's a really great clip. I love the renders, I love the look, I love the ideas. I'm gonna link that below so you can watch the whole thing. I highly recommend it. As always, thanks for watching until the very end. If you wanna get notified about all the uploads, subscribe, hit the bell, and that's it for this week's FNA. See you next week.